everyone, happy Tuesday, and it's Miss Vasquez again for Tech Study. Today, you won't need anything as we finish Jack and the Beanstalk. But before we begin, I want to give a shout out to Jace in Bradley, who his mother keeps sending us photos of him growing his brain to all of our videos. Now, if you want to get a shout out in anyone's video, have your parents or your grandmas or your TTs or anyone in your family text a photo to your teacher of the work that you're doing at home. Now, for today's lesson, you will be able to describe details in illustrations. Now, when we describe the details in illustrations, we study. We study the illustrations. That means we look closely at the pictures. And then we think, hmm, what did I learn about the characters, the setting, the events, or anything else in the text? Now, we're going to study closely some of the illustrations in Jack and the Beanstalk before we continue reading where we left off yesterday. Now, I'm going to look closely at this page, and this is the page where the older man traded the cow and the beans with Jack. Now, hmm, I see by looking closely at the illustrations that the man has the beans in his hand. Now, if you can see closely, I notice that the beans are different colors. Not all beans are the same. I see some blue beans, one with spots on it. I see purple beans. I wonder if that has anything to do with the fact that they might be magic. Now, I notice that the characters are wearing things on their head. This man kind of has something that looks like a mobile. Now, there's stuff sticking out of it hanging from it. I wonder if that moves around. I see Jack wears his own hat. Here, I notice that Jack is running. This is after the trade because the old man has the cow. Now, I notice that he's running because his legs kicked up and it looks like there's air there. Let's look at the next page. Hmm. We're going to see study closely and we're going to think, what did I learn? On this page, I notice that mom looks panicked or upset. Her mouth is wide open. It's almost like she's falling backwards. And now I'm looking closely right here. What do you notice about the illustrations? Yeah, I notice that deep in the soil, there are all kinds of buds. And I wonder if these buds are gonna help the beans grow. I guess we're gonna have to see. Now, when we left off, we heard that the beans were starting to grow, that their roots were wriggled deep into the earth and shoots pushed upwards. Now, we're gonna continue reading where we left off yesterday and look closely at the details in the illustrations to see what we learn about the characters, setting, events, or anything else in our text. Then a long, weary tendril reached down to the house and tapped on Jack's bedroom window. Who's that? Jack yawned. He saw a strange shadow in the moonlit window, and not sure whether this was a dream or a real adventure, he padded across the room and drew back his curtains. There, bending and swaying in the moonlight, was the most enormous beanstalk he had ever seen. I wonder where the top of it goes to, Jack said to himself. There was only one way to find out. Without stopping to think twice, he climbed over the windowsill and started to climb. Soon, the house was just a tiny dot, far below. Still, he made his way upwards. Now, I can see that even though we didn't quite hear it in our illustration, it looks like Jack was pretty shocked, or even afraid, just by looking at the expression on his face. I mean, if I saw that in the window, I might be pretty afraid myself. Finally, he reached the land of the clouds. 
and stepped off his beanstalk, walked into the fluffy gray ground. In the distance, he could see a huge castle. Jack walked straight up to it and knocked on the door. He heard the clank of keys being turned and the rumble of bars being slid back and the rattle of chains being unfastened. Then, at last, the huge door creaked open and a crack that he saw a little old woman peering at him by the light of a candle. What do you notice about the illustrations on this page? Do we learn anything new? Well, it said that he reached the land of the clouds. So I think that the ground is probably a cloud. Do this if you're going to give me a brain match. Yeah. What else do you notice? What do you see around the castle over here? Yeah, it looks like this land has its very own trees. They look interesting. Yeah, let's keep reading. You can't come in, she whispered. Hmm. Let's try that again. You can't come in, she whispered. He'll be back. Go away. Please, Jack begged. I'm a stranger here and starving hungry. Can I just pop in quickly for something to eat? The woman looked at him more closely and saw that he was a nice looking lad with a ready smile. Very well, you can come in for a minute, she said, but don't let him catch any sight of you. Now these must have been all of the keys that she used to open the door. Who's he? Asked Jack as they made their way along the dusty castle corridors to the big kitchen. Lining the walls were mounds of huge bulging sacks which jiggled as Jack brushed against them. The giant, of course, if he catches you, he'll eat you for sure. He's got a foul temper, so you'd be better keep out of his way. Hide him in the sacks if you hear him coming. Then, just as she finished speaking, there was a crashing of heavy footsteps outside the room. Jack only managed to hide behind a heap of sacks when the door burst open and in barged the giant. What do you see on this illustration? Yeah, Jack is over here in the corner hiding behind some sacks. Fee fi fo fum. I smell the blood of a stinky man. Where is he, woman? Where are you hiding him? The giant sniffed his way around the room until he came close to where Jack was hiding. Oh, don't be silly, said the woman. All you can smell is the stew I've made. I was trying a bowl of it to make sure it was good enough for you. Would you like some? Soon, the giant had slurped his way through the enormous bowl of stew. He belched loudly and then demanded, and then demanded, fetch my goose. I want some. More gold. The old woman slipped out of the room and was soon back, cradling a huge, very gloomy looking bird in her arms. Peeping out from his hiding place, Jack watched as the goose began to lay eggs, each one made of pure gold. As each egg appeared, the giant put it into his giant eggs box. Then he demanded, now fetch me my heart. I want some music. Once again, the old woman bustled out of the room and came back holding an exquisite heart made of pure gold. Even the strings were gold. Play, harp, play, shouted the giant. And as if by magic, the room was filled with the most beautiful, gentle music. The strings began to vibrate all by themselves. Soon the giant fell asleep and his sniffing and snoring echoed, the, echoed around the room. Now, do you notice anything about some of the characters on this page? Yeah, there's a goose, and the goose is wearing clothes. It looks like he's wearing a vest and a bow tie. Now, Jack crept out from his hiding 
hiding place and quickly began to drag out of the bulging stacks full of gold coins across the kitchen floor. It was very heavy and it jingled as he pulled it, but the giant did not stir. Jack heaved and heaved and dragged the sack right out of the castle across the crowd and back to the top of the beanstalk. The sack was too heavy for him to carry any further, so he left it there and slid down quickly. Now, we still have a couple pages left to finish. If you want to see the ending of the story, definitely click on our next tech study video that's for today and today only.